Everyone talks about they want to be having a million followers on social media. Have you heard about the shallow versus deep concept for growth? Tell me a bit more. So, so the idea behind it is, you know, most people want to get a million followers on Instagram. But the reality is there are a load of pages and you'll see them all the time on TikTok. You've got 600,000 followers, but the, the, and everyone thinks they're making bang, but mm -hmm. they're not making any money at all. And then you have pages that have two to 3,000 followers and maybe less, or they get fewer videos, but they're making a significant income. In fact, there are video, there are channels that have over 600,000 subscribers on YouTube that, ha that and the guy just stopped posting on it and posted on a video, you know, a channel with 30,000 subscribers because the revenue per subscriber was significantly higher. So the idea is actually it isn't always about volume, it's about the quality of the people who are there and have subscribed. 100%. Okay, yeah, I, I can see that completely. Like you're essentially saying, um, do we want to hit everybody a little bit or do we want to really nail into a core audience of people who you can really engage with and build uh, an audience in the sense of people that you can just interact with and have a great time with and, and build a, a relationship with? Exactly. It, someone described it as, do you want to have a shallow impact across millions or a deep impact across a few? Mm. And, and um, how do you think this affects you and your business? Well, I guess so. my business is in the prop tech space. So and I, I'm primarily focused on people that are moving or are interested in property. And let's be fair, not everybody's moving. So for a vast, you know, significant part of my audience, my content is not going to be relevant. But for some of them it is. And, you know, it's just this idea that, you know, when you're targeting a buyer, you can say, hey, by the way, here's some really, there's a lot of value about property. And they may not be a buyer yet, but when they move in two years, you're front and center, top of mind. And that's a mistake people make when they're thinking about marketing, which is, yes, you know, I'm only interested in you buying that. No, but you're creating goodwill and audience that will translate into a buyer. But for, from a personal perspective on social media, you know, it's tough. I mean, I'll be honest, like, you know, the, 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 the goal getter in me wants to get the big numbers. It wants to get like the, the big, huge followers. It's the brain it, crack, isn't it? It's, it's tough, isn't it? Like, yeah, I know. But if I look at it logically, I guess ultimately you're looking at it unless you've got a social agenda you're looking at it to deliver an outcome so you know the logical versus kind of social brain is a bit different on that i mean how would you sort of think about it well i'll be the first one to admit that i'm a, i'm a little bit dazzled by numbers so i've had a, <laughs> yeah. a couple of pieces of content that i've done fairly well recently on uh, on instagram and things like that and it does um it, it, there's no serotonin boost like it there isn't you know? going viral is phenomenal yeah 100 percent. however the the way that i think about this for what i'm doing like my business is uh, it's a brick and mortar location. It's a gym, uh, although ultimately I do want to position myself as somebody who knows what they're talking about. Not, not just a gym, a gym with a great neon sign, which, by the way, phenom <laughs> phenomenal for attraction and growth. People love that. Yeah, so for, for I mean, like we we uh, we understand that branding side of things. Uh, I am super jealous of your neon sign. I'm yeah. making one. Oh, and it's going to be just fractionally bigger though. Yeah, we're going to get one behind here as well. Actually, get the place enough a little bit. So yeah, uh, for 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 the audience that I'm I'm looking to um to hit, like I I want them to know me for being good at jujitsu, not being run of the mill, and having a, a deep understanding. And for me, actually, like I'm not looking to monetize my audience yet. You know, my my thought process is give as much value and I really want everything that I put out to make the person that watch it have a good time, have a, a happy time, have like a a, a, a a spike of maybe I want to watch that again or, or that was that was great. Mm. But ultimately, the idea for building an audience is to help the gym grow, to uh, allow me to be able to move myself more into a digital space and not just be fixed in one geographical location. Uh, and also, I think something that a lot of people don't think about here is there are people who already come and use my gym and I want those guys to also feel like, yes, I'm at the right place. I'm being taught by somebody who knows what they're talking about. And it's kind of sort of like a, the anti-buyer's remorse model as well. Yes, yes. You know, this is something that Mercedes are famous for, like all of the Mercedes adverts of you driving around in a fancy car with a beautiful woman. They're actually to stop people from bringing the car back. Do you know what I mean? So we want to reinforce mm. my audience that they've made a great decision to be here. And of course, you know, I think they have made a great decision. I really try to do my very abs absolute best in the martial arts space. Do you know, that's fascinating that you say that. And I, I definitely test for that coming into the gym because think about monetization. Money finds you if you deliver value. And I think it's obvious when you watch a creator who is trying to get money, they're just searching by any means necessary to get virality. But in your classic Hormoseism is the bigger the runway, the larger the jet can take off. And actually, if you are delivering that value to people, at some point, they just want to support you. I mean, you just said before this podcast, 
you get a lot of value. You love Jack Slack. I and, know him. And you, you are happy to pay more than he asks because you want to reciprocate and give him that value back. I don't think that there's going to be a sort of uh, genuine amount of money. I'm sure he'd say there is, but yeah, he may disagree. A, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's not an amount of money that I can give that guy to sort of express the gratitude. So I, when I, I logged onto his Patreon, there's a, a certain amount that he asked for. So I gave 150% of that uh, because you can add what you want. So from it's two pound fifty, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, but the, the thing for me is, is like I'd say that I'm, I'm not even kidding here. Like a good ten to twenty, maybe even more percent of my knowledge of MMA has come through that guy's brain and i feel like I, i'm at a point of after 15 years where i can see through the matrix a little bit more in terms of assessing whether somebody's takes are useful or not but when we talk about that giving of value jack slack is a is a phenomenal example of somebody who's pumped out value 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 and it doesn't have to be that conor mcgregor versus khabib's it's it's you know it's the apex cars it's the fight nights it's mm. like he has done a great job of finding a core audience member which is me somebody who's going to stick with him for the long run who's watched all of his content sometimes multiple times because as a coach especially it is right up my alley and i'm not saying that this guy's going to have you know five hundred thousand subscribers but he doesn't need them when you've got somebody like me who's willing to you know there's no sponsorship here or anything i'm willing to tell you about this guy because he's excellent that's awesome i guess jack slack isn't necessarily trying to get the average mma fan he's getting the guys that are very interested in the technique and servicing that audience and you, know, you talked earlier about buyer's remorse i think it links into this because you have it a lot where and some of the training for car sales people is they say you know, you the what, what's the emotional high point for the car seller? It's when they sign the contract. What's the emotional high point for the buyer? When they pick up the keys. And they're different times, and that's the problem. You go to collect the car, and all of a sudden you're at a 10 in terms of your emotional high energy. And then the seller who was the most enthusiastic guy you ever met four days ago is like, yeah, 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 it's just over there. Go grab the keys <laughs> and stuff. And I'm like, oh, well, what's going on now, but yeah. And you regret it. So, But I feel if you've got that value-based mentality with social media... You, you know, you're not really expecting anything back from people. You're there to genuinely serve and help and build. And that makes a big difference for your audience. 1,000%. I think one thing that is ridiculously important for people when they're thinking about their audience is, would you watch your own content? And, and I, I'm really mm. confident to say that everything that I've put out is something that I wouldn't click away from. You know, on my Instagram especially, like, it's a bit weird. Um, and one of the things that I'm really, really, really big on is like, you know, I'll do the occasional technique video, but I really love posting highlights from my roles that are just a little bit weird. Some of the role warm-up roles, some strange stuff that happened, some high magnitude stuff. And part of the reason for that is it's real. Like I'm not sitting there saying like, um, here's a triple arm bar, do you know what I mean? Like, what do you think? Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm like, like, here's something I've hit. It was really great fun. Maybe you'll like it too, do you know what I mean? And it doesn't surprise me that those are the pieces of content that have hit and taken off. It's like, look, I did this, I love this, I'm really passionate about this, I wanna show you this, what do you think? That's great, and I think what comes through in your social media as well is like, it's authentic because you do post the stuff that you like. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's valuable for two, because we, we talk about the Sam Sulekification of YouTube, in other words, less hyper editing, more real personalities. And I feel the agent of change behind that is authenticity, it's just that that's how authenticity is displaying as low effort. And I, I feel that's the big difference. And when you post content that's true to you that you, I love that actually, something that you would like to watch. Like if you spend time editing a video, you watch that back and say, I really enjoyed watching my own content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, in a way, you will find an audience for that eventually. And it's the ones that try to create what they think the algorithm wants or what they think so-and-so wants not only does it not land as well because it's not an authentic style, yeah. you get burnt out quicker and you stop making it because it's exhausting. A hundred percent. I know there's, um, I can't remember the lad's name, but there's an example of a, of a guy who sort of does skits that he thinks are funny and they are funny, but like uh, after a while, it feels a little bit like it's, uh, right, I've got to post four times a day. Uh, here's four bits of content. Out they go. Do you know record, what I mean? yeah, and get yeah. through the, the running mill. And and like I, you know, I'll be the first to admit that actually, like you know, I know that the optimum is to be posting every single day. But even for the gym, where I want to be putting out like high quality content, if I don't have something that has a great purpose that is going to be attractive and useful and valuable for the audience, I just won't post. Mm. Like I'm not going to cheapen what it is that we do without having some layer of value or quality there because that is important to me. And if it, if it means that our members or the people who are tuning in uh, have like have to wait a little bit for high quality. What they're not going to be is fed dog food in between. 
Yeah, I like that idea because, you know, you know Robert Greene, 48 Laws of Power, he actually posted a video which I thought was quite counter mainstream advice, which was you, it, not only do you not necessarily always want to hit quantity, but it's beneficial sometimes to not always be in people's faces on social media. Because they say what, what, is, uh, what is too common is almost not valued as much. So his perspective was sometimes he'll just not post content for a while because he's like, well, it's, well, I haven't seen Robert Greene in weeks. What's going on? What's going on? Which is so counter to the, the classic advice of you need to be having three videos out every single day. But actually, if the quality is not there, then, then why are you making the video in the first place? I think this really does speak to whether or not you're trying to cultivate the different types of audience. Because if you have got a million people tuning in, bro, you best have that content there, front and center. When you said you're going to post programming. Yeah, yeah. People, people need to, like, this is it's the same. You can't, you know, if you've got The Simpsons on at six o'clock every weekday, you can't then just decide that you're going to post it at nine o'clock. I'm not you know? feeling it this week, yeah, guys. Yeah, I'm sorry yeah. about that. Yeah. But in the same time, like, you know, this isn't, this isn't my professional living. It's a supplementary thing that I'm working on consistently. But, but for me, like, as much as uh, as it's important for that consistency for the algo and all the other sort of things i think it's actually like really telling that uh, at the times that i've taken a little bit of a break when i've come back with something that i'm really proud of i actually the audience engages with it we've got a couple of like um people in in the gym who i love to pieces who will just comment on everything and share everything and, and like I, I i'm so thankful for that because you know at the end of the day everybody's time has a price and i i just that price isn't zero and i'm so grateful for the people who are willing to take the time to actually engage to support to share and actually be somebody who's who's like invested in the tribe you know what i mean and, and like the, the the gym especially is something that's the the tribe is everything like you cannot have a brick and mortar business without the people who come to that brick and mortar business they create the atmosphere they refer they are the ones that are on the mats they're the people who they keep the lights on yeah keep the lights on they keep food on the table and they're like that's something that you should never ever 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 take for granted i love that and it's like less about the numbers and more about the people that say this feels like a second home to me i love coming here i've always said that like when i started a, a, a jiu-jitsu gym that the idea in my mind was that if you took jiu-jitsu away and replaced it with something like knitting or ping pong that you'd still have people turn up because the atmosphere, the vibe, and the quality was just there. 